So you want to hide a block on Squarespace. There's going to be a few reasons why you're going to want to do this. One of them being that you just want to see how a page looks without that block, but without then having to delete it and then reinstate it. Another being that you might want to hide a block on mobile, but keep it displayed on desktop or vice versa. Keep it displayed on mobile, but hide it on desktop. Whatever the reason is, being able to hide a block or even a section is a really, really useful tool with Squarespace. So I'm going to show you how just a few lines of code can hide whatever you want on your site with ease. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is grab this Google Chrome extension called Squarespace ID Finder. This is going to make it incredibly easy to find our block ID. It's a completely free extension and I do recommend if you design Squarespace websites to do it on Chrome because of these Chrome extensions that make your life a whole lot easier. So get that downloaded, get that in your extensions bar and then we can move over to the site and start identifying our blocks. If we click on the extension, it's going to give us IDs for everything on the page. It starts with collection IDs. So this ID is for the entire page. Then underneath that, we've got a section ID. Now a section ID is if we go in here, you can see we have our different sections. If I was to add another section in here and then click this, I'd get a new section ID. Then within the sections, we've got our blocks. So each time you add an element into a section, you'll get a new block ID. There is another way to identify our blocks. So if we hold shift command and C, we get Chrome developer tools. And then if we hover over our block and we explore in here, we'll find our block ID just up here. But Heather Tovey's Squarespace ID Finder makes our lives a whole lot easier. And the fact that we don't even have to pay for this is ludicrous. Anyway, I digress. So what we want to do, let's say we want to hide this button, is we click and that copies the ID. Then what we want to do is navigate to design. Then you want to move me out the way. Custom CSS. And then we want to start a new line. So let's call this hide CTA button. Then we want to paste our block ID. Open up some curly brackets. Press enter. And then we want to say display. And then none. And then put a semicolon. And you can see that it's got rid of the button. And it's done that across both desktop and mobile. So the other thing that some people like to do, and I do this in my websites as well, is sometimes you want to hide a block on mobile, but keep it displayed on desktop or vice versa. What we want to do is then wrap our code in media queries. So we will put at media screen and max width of 641 pixels, open a squiggly bracket, and then close the squiggly bracket. So essentially what that means is any screen with a maximum width of 641 pixels, we hide this block. So essentially it means on mobile, we're hiding the CTA button. Now it works the inverse for desktop. So you can put a minimum width of 641, which you can see displays the button again on mobile, but then on desktop it's hidden. So you can play around with this. If you want to hide specific elements, just so you can see what a page looks like, then you can use the block ID, display none, and then just get rid of it if you want to reinstate that block. But if you want to create different versions of a page, you know, obviously one for desktop and one for mobile, then using the media queries is your best bet. And that is how you hide a block on Squid.